Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career mode in Kerbal Space Program 1.8. What the heck are we doing? Well, we did plain things last time. We need science. I'm just not... we're not doing anything but getting... milking some science. I need... I need a very lucrative science-y thing. Asteroids, yeah. Let's get some science so we can properly exploit asteroids though. Because... Oh, come on. Uh, what we need is uh, ISRU units here. Yeah, but we can't exploit the fuel because we don't have this technology. So first, we need to do things around Minmus. Yeah, 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 I know you want to see asteroids. <laughs> okay, I got it. I understand. Yes, scientist. Yes, Minmus Hopper. That's right. And we all, oops. Oh no, I don't want the docking port like that. And I'm going to, yeah, it was supposed to be oriented this way. Mimus Hopper, and we'll have a science lab as well. This is just supposed to get us to Minmus and get us into orbit. And maybe uh, the rest of the fuel will be to refuel that. Don't forget Dress. Ah, yeah, good point. That poor Kerbal. Poor, poor Kerbal. Okay, we are 28 tons. Got lots of fuel down here. Whoops, oops, oops. Where's that one launcher? Space tub cargo. No, this suggests that it's what I want. Oh, maybe it's the space tub, yeah. Okay, why is it mysteriously not showing Delta V for this stage? We have fuel, right? We have fuel. That decouples. not do that immediately. Oh, I guess it didn't like the fairing in that stage. Okay, that seems about right. Sea level, it's pushing it. Pushing it. Okay. We'll have to reserve some fuel though, because if we want to bring it back down and everything. I don't know if it's the ultimate Minmus science exploitation, but it'll be good enough. Do we think this is safe enough to launch a Kerbal on? Uh, Bob. Bob deserves to go, finally. Bob hasn't got nearly enough stars. Um, pilot. We, we sent Jeb last time. Let's send Valentina this time. Okay. Uh... We'll send another scientist for the mobile processing lab later. Not those docking ports. Okay, here we go. We're not going. Obviously, this is not built to bring Valentina back directly. So, okay, here we go. Bob will be just be staying in the science lab, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, go. If you meant lar making larger ones so that it looks like a Soyuz, it doesn't have the right shape anyway, and we, we, we have to land it. Uh, it's also a little bit too heavy. Anyway, why don't you want it to look more like Proton? Proton would be easier. Okay, um, well this needs to get to orbit first. And then we have to pay attention to that as it comes back down. We won't be able to get back to the KSC. Well, no, I might. We've got this with a high apoapsis, unfortunately. Come on. You know what? Um, I'm gonna do something dodgy. I'll, I'll switch to the other thing, get it into orbit, then get this into orbit. Not ideal, but we'll work with it. Okay, it's getting a little bit extreme there. Adjustment. So it says that my periapsis will be 125 there, so should be safe. Science gathering on every planet? Even Eve? Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it's nice to make sub -re replicas sometimes, yeah. So usually I'm so picky I can't 
can't make a replica unless I throw in a whole bunch of mods to make it look just right. <laughs> I generally avoid trying to make replicas in stock. Unrealistic crew transfers. Well, I mean, how unrealistic is it, I guess, is the question. This is a hollow brand adapter, but then this is uh, Science Junior. I could EVA them if you'd like. <laughs> but I don't have any mods, so nothing's stopping me. There's no connect connected living space. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, when the Soviets first started docking things together and transferring crew, they didn't do it during the, uh, through the docking port. They did it by EVA, so... No. We can do that too. Yeah, uh, Soyuz 1 was not successful. Uh, and then Soyuz 2 and 3, they didn't quite manage the dock up and everything. It was Soyuz 4 and 5 that did the dock up, but Soyuz 5 ended up being the most dangerous mission I think anybody's ever survived. I was no longer stock. Now you have no idea what stock and not. Uh. Darn it! The DLCs are stock. <laughs> We're going with that. Anyone survived? Yeah, that's what I meant. Did I not say that? It was a pretty dangerous mission in general. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how how you beat Soyuz 5 necessarily. Let me recall the details for you. So I'm, I'm going to bring up the almighty Wikipedia. This, okay, the craft's service module did not separate, so it entered the atmosphere nose first leaving cosmonaut Boris Volonov hanging by his resta restraining straps. As the craft aerobraked, the atmosphere burned through the module. It was actually getting hot inside, but the craft read itself before the escape hatch was burned through. Then, the parachutes li parachute lines tangled and the landing rockets failed, resulting in a hard landing which broke Volonov's teeth. And what it doesn't say there is that after that, he was part of a parade with other cosmonauts and was shot at. And right after that, the, he was still missing his teeth. Uh, like, like the day after, he had to be part of a parade uh, in triumph for the mission, you know. And, and then he was shot at. He, the, the shooter was probably trying to shoot at some one of the politicians or something, but... So, I don't know if you can... If you can uh, come up with a more dangerous mission that was not in space. I mean, he even got the bonus getting shot at thing. <laughs> Just want me to use clouds. Oh, well, I do like clouds. Okay, so this is done. I mean, not done done, but uh, it's on its way. And we need to uh, try and get that stage back down. Yeah, I, I, I was going to do a video specifically on Soyuz 5 at some point. The most dangerous space mission ever survived. Hardcore... It's not that they're hardcore people, it's that... Uh, for, for, for a lot of it, the space program just simply straight out had no respect for the lives of cosmonauts. <laughs> I mean, it's just like... Because, you know, in Soyuz 1, the guy died. Right, and that was a parachute failure. That was that was a parachute failure, and actually Boris Volonov, when he had the trouble with his parachute, he thought that it was the same parachute failure. Uh, he figured that they just didn't bother to fix it for him. Uh, so, yeah, no, and and the the cosmonauts did not like the fact that their lives were sort of treated cheaply either. Uh, in Soyuz one, you know. He knew that he was going into a death trap, basically. It was actually amazing how well he did, given that. Uh, completely thanks to his own faculties. Because the craft was breaking apart 
as he was going along. I mean, it was just like one thing failing after another. Um, can we get to the stage this? So just trying to hold it, uh, hold it together so he could survive, but then the parachute, what could he do about that? Nothing. I mean, service module busted, practically baked, nearly the hatch blew uh, because of the temperature. It pointed in the wrong direction, right? So, <laughs> coming, re-entering in the wrong, I think that's the only time I've heard of anybody re-entering in the wrong direction. Nose first. I don't think that's happened otherwise. Oh, well, I mean, the, the shuttle goes nose first, but you know, you know what I mean. Oh god, that was more than I wanted. Belly first, yeah. However you want to put it. Actually, this is not overshooting at all. Uh, let's just hope we don't hit the mountains. It's okay. I think this is the first time this is going to try and land on land, though. I don't know how well that's going to work out. 70% pumpkin pie? No, water. Though it's, I'm still 70% water. It's, uh, or 70% it's of the non-water amount is pumpkin pie. These are the fake trees. Still need to visit one of the real trees. No Cool Whip or, or Whipped Cream, just the Pumpkin Pie. Thankfully, I'd be dead right now if there was Cool <laughs> Oh god, it's landing on one engine. Uh, 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 recover quickly, quickly! 8-bit micro, threatening to solder on stream. Very good. A good case. Yeah, actually... Oddly enough, the cases can be more difficult than the actual boards. <laughs> I've had that experience. Well, at least there's uh, there's some sort of uh, form factor for it. But you know, what, when I'm talking about dealing with cases for boards, I'm thinking like the Arduinos. You know, how they have the, the, the little pagoda, right, going on with the shields on top of each other. And then trying to fit something around that. That leaves the, you know, ports open, you know, so that you can plug it in and access the USB or whatever. Yeah, they, they don't make things that shape. <laughs> Just don't. That was one reason why I wanted the 3D, I mean, I, uh, the 3D printer right now is out of commission. Like, I need a new nozzle for it, but making cases was a um, big driver of the for the 3d printer form fact well there's so many different form factors for arduino each arduino is sort of different right the little uh screws are in different places the little plugs are in different places it's just it's the uno mega art uh, leonardo this and that and uh i think our lines of communication, we're gonna probably not have communication at periapsis, so I think I'll pre-capture here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making a compact with the power supply, yeah. Yeah, and in the case of Arduino, that's batteries. And maybe solar panels. Depends on what you're doing. Micro ATX. Okay, I'm actually gonna write down the biomes that we land in. <laughs> I wish I had like a map, but let's just go ahead and uh, we've landed there before. Uh, wait, yeah, that's the that's the exper the the experiment thingy, but we probably haven't landed a science junior, so we'll be fine. Uh, I didn't put a controller on here at all, so this is gonna be basically dead. That's gonna be fun. Probably should have put a controller on it. Oh well.
Oh, I probably should have just used that. Uh, can we disable staging now? Uh, do you guys know, is this flat over here different from that flat over there? Or is it just the same flats? I don't know, uh... Yeah, this is the first time in this series that I'm using legs, I think. So, uh, is, is the internet alright? I mean, is, are people getting a lot of frames dropped or something? They'll tip over for sure with legs. Uh, yeah, I need to design the self-writing device that I was thinking of. Especially for the Mars Colonization series. Of course, if you actually topple on Minmus, it's alright, because the reaction will be enough to write yourself, I think. Oop. Maybe that docking port's a little bit low. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought I had tucked this, uh, I must have put, uh, taken off and put it on again, because I thought it was tucked in more than that. Well, looks like the landing legs weren't the most useful things ever. No, I guess they're keeping it from tipping over. But it totally busted the docking port. Okay, observe materials bay. Run analysis. Okay, uh, what could that did, but alright. Okay, uh, well, I guess Bob will do all the sciencing. Oh, we've already done that at least. Okay. Oh, we can't take data like that. I should have put the goo containers at the bottom. We've already planted a flag in the flats. Um, I guess we can take surface sample. Yeah, that we haven't done. So, let me just jot down. This was the lesser flats. Okay. Uh, let's... Um, I want to... Oh, I guess we didn't do the crew. Okay, just board then. Eight bit micro. So, uh, is this a different biome? Do you think? This. Uh, let's let's hop over here anyway. Go to that bridge and then go over there. Okay. Gotta say, this looks a lot bumpier in person than it does on the map. Now, I see those rocks there. Those, I don't, Well, I guess they're probably all just scatter anyway. Unless we get a mission, I don't think we're going to get any of those. Yes. Download Roots 8-bit computer. Fit to run a space shuttle. No, I, there's some things you need a rover to science. Okay, that should be all of that. Let's check out the EVA report. Nah, we already done that. But, no surface sample. The resonance of your laptop fans. That's a bad sign. <laughs> your laptop fans are really going. And resonating. Just the right frequency. So yeah, I think that rock in front of us is rover only. It's definitely not something this Kerbal can pick up. Well, okay, fine. Uh, climb. Go ahead, climb. Kerbal rock climbing! Hey, actually, this should be a sport. Once they do multiplayer in KSP2, they should have Kerbal rock climbing, and we should compete to see who can do be the best rock climbing. Uh, he's lost his grip. Can I take a surf set? No, I guess we don't want to do that. Oop. And we'll race each other to the top of uh, rock formations. This needs to happen. I think that could be the best thing in KSP2. Racing in general would be. Why is it moss covered? It's a good question. We'll need a rover to figure that out for us. Oh, ah, he bonked into it. Of course he bonked it. I was aiming for the thing and trying to press F in time, but no. Nope.
Okay. Now I don't know if uh, this little bit is another flat, uh, a different flat than that one. It needs to be different from lesser flats. It might be the same flat. Let's see. In the middle of pulling off what I'm trying to pull off in Unity, I'm constantly tempted to just make a platformer. It seems just... Maybe I should do that first kind of thing, but we'll see. It's still lesser flats. So we, we don't need to do this. I'm doing completely the wrong thing, aren't I? Uh... The problem is, it's, complete, uh, it's totally on the opposite side of Minmus from us. How far have I gotten? Uh, well, I guess we could do a quick little uh, look in the... the what you call it? Trek Tech Tree. We're trying to milk some science out of Minmus right now. Uh, so here we are on the Tech Tree. Uh, this is the 300 level. We've got high altitude flight, large volume containment, nuclear propulsion, Scanning tech and electronics. I haven't gotten to uh, beyond Duna yet because of comms. We're playing in hard mode. But I need the highest comm technology in order to extend probes to Drez, Jewel, and Elu. We haven't done anything with uh, Moho yet. The increased capacity of like Dragon 2 might mean that. Uh, it'll, it'll probably be a cheaper ride for Essa, the Japanese, the Canadians, and everybody, really. And hopefully a lot more astronauts will get a chance to go to the space station thanks to the um, larger capacity of both Dragon 2 and CST-100. Oh, wrong way. We have to control from here. I need to tune down these RCS thrusters. Okay. We have docked. Let's see what we're going to do with our science. Let me do the RCS thrusters now. How much should we transmit and how much should we send to the... No, let's just keep everything for now. Bob will EVA and take the experiments to the science lab and then we'll sort it out. Yeah, you have to have some competition. If you've got a monopoly, then... The uh, monopoly gets to set whatever price. Definitely, I think the materials study will just churn here. And the surface sample. Striku. Seismic scan will transmit back. Well, recovery is more for... Why would a seismic scan have more for recovery? Anyway. Got 244 data. Hold on, I'll think about that. Pressure scan. Oh, we'll just transmit that. Serial study, um, surface sample key. I'll just transmit the seismic scans. I want some science. Uh, he took the science and he went into the lab, and now it's uh, four science per day rate there, and I think. Uh, maybe Val will just go and... I don't know, I, I think we'll just have... Wait, there's one more. Seismic sand, transmit. Um, maybe we'll have Bob grab some more. We only did three biomes. Oh, well, no, really two biomes. Oh, not enough electric charge, shoot. Oh, we should have put more batteries. I meant to put batteries. Did we even get the science? There's like no batteries on here at all. Wait. Oh, 
how long do we wait to harvest? Well, it says four signs per day, so it depends on how much you want. Um, I guess we could leave them for now, come back, and then uh, grab what's there uh, in a hundred days. We should check on that Dres mission. Let me orient so that it's got the solar panels flush to the sun. It won't be able to operate during the nighttime side though without the batteries. Well, it's got 0 0.001 science now. <laughs> okay, let's see about that Dres mission. Transmission. One year and 330 days. You've got plenty of time. Plenty of time until his Dres encounter. So, okay. Um, let's time warp for 100 days. Okay. So, let's see about how much science we've gotten. Well, 368. I expected it to be full, but then again, we have this whole nighttime issue. Oh, let's, let's, before it runs out of power, let me just go to the tracking station. <laughs> Cheats. Let's time warp a little bit longer to get the full load of science before we proceed. Seems like maybe 30 more days will do the trick. This is so against my principles, this minimus science harvesting. It's shocking. Well, it's recharging. Ah, yeah, close enough. Alright. Uh, the problem is, I don't know if I can safely transmit the science with only a hundred electric charge. Miko, do, do you know? How much electric charge does it take to transmit the science? How much do you think? Uh, I'll send a quick mission to dock with it with batteries. The how much, uh, we'll go to the track, uh, to the um, Space Center VAB and build something with batteries. We will need some solar panels. I mean, actually, probably we won't. We don't need some solar panels, but uh, heck, why not? What's our thrust weight ratio? Pretty bad, but then you know, it doesn't need to be good. We do need RCS and putting four-way RCS when we've got six-way symmetry is so annoying. <laughs> okay, very small nose cone, apparently too small. I've been wanting to use the skiff for a while, but it's expensive. I mean, I guess if we tuck that in, it can balance on that and the landing legs, barely. How many do I need? That's half a ton, half a ton, half... That's 1.5 tons. That's another 1.6, so... And then... There's 0.1 apiece. Uh, could be three. Could be three parachutes. Reaction wheel. Well, we've got the probe core's reaction wheel. <laughs> it's good enough. Um, I want to drain uh, the top ones first. Okay, and make sure it's the right engine, and launch. Don't get wobbly on- don't go wet- oh, maybe the aerodynamics isn't very good. <laughs> okay, be careful, be careful, be careful. Uh, always such an optimist about the aerodynamics. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, uh, here's... Here's passing the speed of sound. No, come on, no. No. Uh, spin stabilize in a way. No, no, no. Uh, I, I don't think we can make orbit. I think... Our best bet is to try and land the sucker, but, hmm. Um, oh, I can't even reach the fuel up there. This is a okay angle. Let's just dump the fuel down the bottom. Whoa. Uh, 
I, I don't think this is going to be good. It's just going to flop and break apart, but... Whatever, we'll try our best. Oh, we lost control. I wanted to dump some more fuel, but of course we've lost line of sight. Uh, get ready to click that recover button. Recover! 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 Okay, we recovered it. The art of spamming the recover button. Okay, here we go. Tried so hard to make it nice and aerodynamic, but no. Nah, yeah, let's just go for it. Apoaps is getting a bit high, that's all. This will get disposed of. Well, it's a little bit high on the periapsis, but still. It should be okay. Well, you better charge it on wind energy. That or solar, I mean... Is nuclear allowed? I think nuclear should be allowed, too. RTGs for every Cybertruck? What could go wrong? Our world? Some parts of our world are pretty good with it. Others, not so much. Uh, the French and Germans have, as far as I know, been quite alright. The US Navy is extremely good with it. And it's a good model for, like, using nuclear reactors on spaceships, too. Because basically, you know, your average submarine operates a lot like a spaceship. But it is certainly a problem that we aren't, uh... Aren't updating our nu nuclear reactors nearly fast enough. You know, a lot of them have been sitting around like that since the 1970s. That's not good. Some new reactors are being built, but probably ought to update the technology a lot more. And But it's complicated, because you know, people are always afraid of nuclear stuff, and... And then Fukushima happens, you know, I mean, somebody messes up at some point and it all ruins things for everybody. I mean, the problem is the balance between uh, making a new investment and the return on that investment. But I think the a newer technology reactor might be more cost efficient. But you have to put the down payment in, right? And then there's the whole handling of nuclear waste, which is a whole other turkey. Some countries do that better, some do not. Yeah, I mean, airlines... They... I mean, technically the technology is still fine, right? I mean, uh, a Boeing 747 from the 70s will work just fine. Uh, but they do strive for better cost efficiency and because they want, you know, more profit per flight. And so they, they update their airliners. But this is not the way I want to point. Yeah, but again, you can just choose not to connect your nuclear power plant to the internet. I mean... You can still use better nuclear technology without actually connecting. If if the 1970s nuclear reactors work just fine without connecting to the internet, you can just not connect your nuclear power plant to the internet. I mean, there's no no big deal. You can update all the rest of the technology. I mean, when I say new technology, there's there's other stuff that goes on in a nuclear reactor that they may want to update. Oh god, I've tilted it all over the place. I mean, there is absolutely no requirement to decide to pick a system that requires constant updates. If it was okay in the 1970s not to have one, you can still have that. If you think that a particular thing that uh, is too onerous, particular option is too much, then you can skip that, by the way. You mean fusion? Uh, no, well, fusion is a long, long story. Well, you know, the problem is making it affordable. 
Which is a problem of nuclear too. I mean, the, the problem of nuclear isn't just the safety issues. It's just the fact that it costs a lot. And in the end, if you could get a good mix of solar and wind working in the local area, of course, not all areas will be able to implement that. But if you could, then there really isn't a whole lot of reason to spend on nuclear. But there are places where nuclear would be good. It's nice that, you know, China is doing things like that. And Europe as well. It would be a good thing to do. It's a bit depressing that there isn't more effort here to figure these things out. There is some uh, Lawrence Livermore labs using laser fusion stuff. True, but I mean other countries have elections too, thy lord root, so it's not... It's not like that should be a definite impediment. It's more about the way thinking is structured around the elections than anything else. Why it should be a partisan issue anyway is beyond me. Our pack was for uh, transmitting the science, which we'll do once we're in daylight. Let me go around. We've got uh, 487 science collected here that I want to transmit. So let's recharge first. Oh, sometimes. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of science now. <laughs>